we are, if you want to turn on your uh, video, it gives us an uh, ability to kind of see. And then there's a little button on your screen that you can do gallery view and it, it allows you to see everyone. And I don't know how that affects it when I do the PowerPoint slides along with it, kind of how it affects the videos on your end. But um, hopefully we can kind of get people on here. And if you don't have your video and I can't see your video, just be sure to speak up when you have something to say. Um, uh, just because we'll be kind of going along and if you have some comments, um, just let me know. Um, just kind of speak up there. Okay. All right. Hi, Gamzi. Hi, Eni. How are you? Good. And Arjan, Hi. hello. Hey, Eni. Always a pleasure. Long okay. time. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. Good. Okay. All right. So our book, Compound Effect, that might be backwards for you guys, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this has been a really fun one for me because it's an it's a concept that I love and I've loved for a long time and it's it's one of those concepts that you hear a lot in different books. Um, it's not a new concept, but I'm glad that they had a whole book on it <laughs> because I love this concept. So hopefully, a lot of you have been able to read it, if not in full, at least in part or um, watch kind of an introduction video of it. Um, and for those of you who have not been to our book club, this is a very different format than um, our study groups. Basically, I have everyone unmuted so that we can have just an overall general discussion. If there's like background noise or something on your side, I'll probably mute you <laughs> just so that we can keep it um, you know, quiet and um, so that we can hear everyone. But, um, but it's intended to be more of an open discussion. So please speak up. And I know sometimes when we have more numbers, it's a little bit harder to get, you know, your voice in. But um, I want to hear from you. So what I have is kind of an outline of the things discussed in the book. Um, and then I'll ask questions and I want you to add your thoughts um, here and we want to hear your voice and want to want to practice English and and have a good community discussion here. Okay, so for all of those who have just showed up. Um, if you want to turn on your video, please do that so that we can see your faces um, in this discussion. If not, just be sure to speak up as you go along. Okay, so um, is this the first time, had anybody read this previously? Or is this kind of your first time hearing about this book? You had, Arjun? Yes. And Gomzi, you had re read it? Okay, good. La part pour tranquille, là. Je suis en mode vidéo conférence, là. So, Amadou, I'm going to, here, let me see. Amadou, just make sure that uh, that the background noise is not, there's no background noise as you're walking around there, okay? okay. Or you can Hello, just be in your, your microphone. Okay, Hi, I'm sitting down. Okay. Hi, how are you? It's my first time in the... In okay, the I'm glad you're here. Good. And we got your video you. so we can see you. Good. Um, yes. Yeah, so this one, this is just more of an open discussion um, as we go along. So we have a few more here than we usually do, which is awesome. I'm glad we can speak up, okay? So this is our 15th book that we've done on Pronunciation Pro. And so if you haven't looked through the book club meeting, recording. Let's see, someone has a, a their microphone, so it's, um, I'm hearing an echo. Does anybody hear that echo too? Yeah, it's there. There's some uh, feedback. Yeah, so if you can you just check your microphones to see if, if it's coming through your computer. Mm. Let's see. Mm, no. How can we do that? Um, and if, if someone is using a Mac, you can mute yourself using the shortcut command shift so that when, when okay. you don't speak, it's, it's muted. If you think it might be you, 
maybe mute your microphone and we'll kind of see what it might be. Let's see. Um, okay. Okay. I, I think we figured it out. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, so when we're talking about compound effect, I think just this book club is a good example of the compound effect. Um, we've been doing it for, you know, we've had 15 books that we've gone through um, and you can kind of go back and look on Pronunciation Pro website and there's recordings for each one. And so if you're a reader and you're doing that consistently, think about how many new concepts and ideas and things are happening. If you're just reading a book, even, we haven't even been doing this every month. It's just every, every couple of months, usually. Um, on average, we've been doing this a couple, every couple of months. But you see how we, as we add books, as we continually do that routine of doing the book club, how over time, 15 books, that's, that's a good amount of knowledge and understanding and um, discussion and community that has happened through, um, through just that one effort, okay? All right, any initial thoughts before we kind of dive in? Was this, was this a helpful book for, for you who read it? Who read it? I have to read say, it? Like... Go. Go ahead. Amadou, go ahead. No, I, I just say that um, I have a confession to make because I haven't read the book. And uh, to be honest, I, I don't know the name of the book. So could you change it just a little bit? So I can okay. listen in and... Uh... Yeah, so the, the book is called The Compound Effect. And you might not be the only one here that hasn't read it. So um, we'll do kind of a review as we go through. And it, it is a nice way to kind of show up and get a review of a book and discussion from people who have read it. So it's okay if you haven't read it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if you have comments or things as we go along, um, be sure to add that in. Okay, Arjan, you were just saying? Okay, no, I was just going to say that uh, this book is actually uh, one of my top book, if not one of my favorite, because uh, just because of where I was in life and where I was right now, uh, huh? it's a really impactful book in my opinion, so uh, I'm really excited about it, so I uh, can't wait for you uh, what you have to say. Okay, good. So I'm, I'm excited to kind of hear your examples of what Oh, I'm getting the, the feedback again. So whoever had muted and then then unmuted again, maybe it's your micro microphone. Um, but I'm interested to kind of hear your life, real life examples of how you've applied this to your life. Okay. All right, so let's see. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, uh, um, I, I have subscribed to uh, Darren Hardy, um, it, oh, good. Well, every day, yeah, uh, but I haven't uh, read his book, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I, yeah, I understood, uh, but not in profound way. That's why I'm here. <laughs> okay, well, good, good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's the, the application of some of these experiences or, or these ideas is really the power of it, and I get really excited when we talk about the application here. Okay, Edgar, hi. Hi, <laughs> think, how are you? I think the echo I, is coming from yours because I just muted you and, and then it, it might not be coming through your, your it might be coming through your um, computer as well. Okay. I muted you to kind of see if it was and I am getting the feedback from wait, yours. So you might kind of play I, around with the... I'll be the, off my haircut. Just play around with it a little bit and see if you can... There we go. I think we got it. Is, is okay? Is, is, yeah. Is better? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Also, good. Uh, uh, I began to to read the the book. Okay. Good. I love it. Yeah. Good. But, uh, I I read uh, the two first uh, chapters. Uh huh. Right now. Uh, it's very interesting concept. Uh, uh, I think uh, I can apply to my learn to to learn English with you because if <laughs> I can to to try every day uh, to improve the English. It's interesting. It's very interesting. 
Hello. Perfect. Now you know why we chose this book. <laughs> and this is this is what I'm hoping for all of us is that that you will apply this concept to your English development because that's really what it's all about for us here at Pronunciation Pro is I'm kind of I'm helping you kind of as, establish routines and daily habits and daily practice that um, that if done consistently over time leads to huge results. Because you all know, as you've learned English, it didn't happen just like that, right? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> or it's not just happening just like that, right? This is a process. This is over time. You have to develop it uh, slowly and consistently over time. And have you noticed that when you stop working on it, what happens? Uh, what happens? Gums, yeah. <laughs> forget very quickly. You forget very quickly the things that you've learned. It's kind of like, it's very similar to exercise. I love, I love comparing English, language development to exercise because it is that compound effect with exercise is very easy to see, right? Yep. If you consistently exercise, then you're going to have those benefits, those long-term be benefits of health and vitality. Um, same thing with language learning. It has to be a lifelong consistent effort. So let's learn how to do that in a way that you can establish habits and routines and things for a lifetime, not just 12 weeks, <laughs> okay? <laughs> that's my, might be where we start, but that's not the end goal, okay? All right, good. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here. And a lot of times when I share it in full screen mode on my end, I can't see all of the videos and all the participants. So I'll have to kind of shuffle back and forth so I can view everyone. Um, but again, just speak up when you are, you have something to say. Um, and that uh, will be how we kind of go along here. Okay, so the compound effect by Darren Hardy. So it's interesting because I didn't know who Darren Hardy was before doing this book or reading this book. And then I started, he said, it says publisher of Success Magazine. And so I started looking at Success Magazine and following them on Instagram and things like that. And it, um, it's a really interesting uh, publication, has a lot of really great insight to this magazine. So he's, you know, he's a publisher for it and that's his world. So it makes sense that he's in that you know, professional development, personal development arena, and has a lot to say about that. All right, who can tell us about the magic penny? Here, let me get the chat box out here. So, no, I just shared a Wikipedia article about the Success Magazine. Oh, okay. Uh, about okay. the the yeah, magic penny, I, I think it's. I mean, the book itself is nothing new, but it's a good reminder. And also it's a yeah. good way to apply this to every, every field. Because usually when we hear about the compound effect, it's most of the time about money. But when you invest, you're going to get more money. But we, we don't talk about that in maybe exercising or practicing an instrument or English. So, yeah, it's, it's a good reminder, I think. Yeah, that compounding interest is an idea that we talk about, you know, in money and finances. Um, and I loved how he in he started the book with this magic penny um, story. Can Arjun? Can you do you do you remember the kind of the that story there at the beginning with Absolutely. the magic penny? Okay, yes. so tell me tell me about what happened. What he he how he used the magic penny um, analogy. So. Um, he gave us uh, two examples of which, which uh, choice you can make. Uh, one is he gave us the option of getting $3 million if you have the chance, or uh, take, one, uh, take the penny, but it doubles a value every single day for the next 31 days. Which one would you take? And mostly, uh, my presentation was like, well, shoot, give me the $3 million and I'll cash out. <laughs> but when you actually calculate the, uh, the penny double every single day for the next 31 days, uh, it actually compounded to uh, $10 million when it all said and done. Uh, but it doesn't kick in until like the last three days of, uh, you know, the, the last the 28th, the 29th, and the 31st 
all the way to 31st mm -hmm. when you see the result. But at the beginning, you don't see that result because it's just, you know, penny and then two pennies and then four pennies and then 18, uh, 16 pennies. And then by, I think, uh, day 20, you are actually just in your five, you, you just have, you just hit $5,000 where your friend or where your friend is having a good time having a $3 million or whatnot. But basically the, the, the message is, you know, when you are willing to uh, wait long enough, patiently and consistently, and not sending out your, you know, not holding out right away, there will be a, a reward um, at the end to where it's gonna be a big one. So hopefully I explained that very well, uh, Amy. Yeah, that was perfect. That was awesome. So yeah, if you have the choice between $3 million today or a penny that doubles in value every day for 31 days, at first, like you're saying, oh, I'll take the 3 million. But then as you do the math, you realize, oh wait, that's over $10 million. Yes. So I'm hearing a little bit of background noise. Is some, there's something kind of in the background noise in somebody's. Can, if that's you, can you go ahead and mute? Um, yeah, Edgar, you have something to say? Okay. Uh, my question is, the point is the, the double the penny. It's difficult. When, mm -hmm. when we talk about uh, a penny, it's no problem. But uh, double the investment or double the the situation is the double the, the the previous it's difficult it's difficult man i want to know how can i get that yeah so it's difficult yeah what what makes it difficult edgar uh, difficult uh, it's difficult to 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 double the previous value mm -hmm. Yeah, in your personal life, in our own it's, it's, it's experience. Because, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, in the sample of the penny, uh, mm -hmm. after, after one month, uh, I, I had to double the investment, but uh, we don't have enough money to do that. Mm -hmm. This is my... It's, yeah. But okay. I want to finish the book to... to to one word is the trick. <laughs> well, let's go through the trick. So, so really kind of the, uh, the concept here that they're trying to get across with the, the penny and Arjun articulated well is that small changes maintained consistently over time lead to unexpectedly dramatic results. So you think of one penny versus $10 million in 31 days. And just that compound effect that it just does keeps doubling and doubling and doubling. And as we apply that concept into life here, um, this is, it, it has the same dramatic results um, as the magic penny, okay? And then there's this concept of the ripple effect. And in, um, in the, the book, The Power of Habits, they call it the domino effect. It's basically just kind of like you start one good habit, or one good routine or one good thing, and it doesn't only affect that one stream, right? It affects a lot of other areas, okay? So when, so for example, if you were to, and, and, and in the, the power of habits, they talk about a keystone habit, where it's, you know, the keystone of an arch. You, have you guys seen the keystone of an arch is the very middle stone of an arch. So in masonry, you can see that like that one middle stone is what's holding everything together. Okay. So you talk about keystone, a keystone habit. It's basically what's the one habit. And again, like the book, the one thing, what's the one thing that you can do that will have this ripple effect. Okay. So you have like one habit, what one habit could be done to have this ripple effect. So for example, um, if I were to decide, oh, you know what? I'm going to get up and exercise every day for 30 minutes. Well, in order to do that, I need to go to bed earlier. I need to, well, at least if I'm gonna get up early and do that, I need to go to bed earlier. So, okay, I'm getting better sleep. If I'm gonna, if I'm going to go to bed earlier and I can't do work or something at night, I need to be more focused during my work day. Okay, so that leads to, you know, okay, then if I'm going to be more focused during my day, I need to, 
eat better. You know, there's kind of this ripple effect that happens. It's like, okay, what one good habit could lead to other habits? Does that make sense? So yep. Gamzi, you're, you're shaking your head there. What, what thoughts are you having right now? Oh, I, I had same thing in my life. I started uh, to do morning gym. Okay. Uh, I'm doing it for uh, a few, for I think uh, six months, and then uh, I uh, after doing the gym, I mm -hmm. started to uh, be careful uh, with my eating. Okay. I try to eat healthy, and uh, you are right. I I try to. Uh, go to bed a little early mm -hmm. and it changed a lot and yeah uh, i can uh, i can arrange my day uh, uh, according to my gym huh? and it it increased my effectivity a lot yeah yes it affects lots of things i uh, yes the ripple effect yeah i didn't hear before uh, about the ripple effect but it's yes but it makes sense, right? Yes. As you've kind of seen it happen in your life. And I think that's the power of the compound effect is that it is not just, um, if you think of compounding, well, how does it double? Like Edgar, Edgar was saying, how in the world does it double, double, double like that? And I think it's because it influences so many other areas of your life. You have these good habits, you start these good routines, and it, all, it has this effect on a lot of other other areas. Yes. So kind of focus on one thing and it, and it affects so many other areas. So definitely uh, there. So we talked a little bit, Edgar, about kind of the barriers to success. So if it's so effective, having these, you know, habits or routines, why doesn't everybody do it? Okay. <laughs> Matthew, I kind of hear see you smiling there. Why, do, why don't we just do it? Why, like, what's the big deal? <laughs> uh, because it's not a candy. So it's, it's not a, <laughs> we, we like a instant gratification, uh, especially nowadays with all the technology we have every access to everything with a single click and uh, mm -hmm. we're not used to working hard anymore. So um, we'll just get, get it done someday. But uh, in the end, you really need, either need to be, to be striving to accomplish something for yourself or you need to be really, I think, in a, in a bad position in your life and you really need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes it takes that rock bottom experience for you to say, all right, <laughs> I'm done doing it this way. We've got to stop doing procrastinating. I've got to stop putting off. I have got to stop looking for the, the quick win. Right. Mm -hmm. I have to look more long, long term. Right. right? <clears throat> yeah, I, anybody, I found yeah, go ahead, Kim. I found that it's difficult to to maintain in the long run because I started to do my gym every day and um, I could keep it for four months and afterwards um, uh, I dropped for one day and after uh, another day and then you know I completely <laughs> completely um, yeah. stop it yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, now I, it's very hard to come back and uh, um, I'm not I lost my motivation <laughs> yeah so. Yeah, so you know, I would like to, yeah. And you know why that happens? It's because we're human. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just our human condition, right? <laughs> so we have, to, we have to kind of fight against some of these just natural tendencies that all of us have. Okay, so here are some of the natural tendencies or the reasons why people tend to not do it. Like, um, you know, they haven't experienced it before. There aren't those immediate results. And if we don't have immediate results, it can get discouraging. So you're like, oh, I went to the gym for two weeks and yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't lose any weight or I didn't, you know, I didn't see the effects. Oh, it must not work. <laughs> or John, you're laughing about this. <laughs> yes. It was just, it's crazy because, you know, once you stop going to the gym, it's so easy to keep going. But once you actually started going back uh, just this year, I mean, I love it again because I'm like, mm -hmm. man, it's the more I do it, the more I want to do it and because I want to, the more I do it and kind of like what you guys have been saying, it influences all aspects of my life, you know, more energy, more positivity. And so, uh, but 
but yeah, I was just, I'm just laughing because most of the time we want that immediate gratification of, man, I've been going to the gym for a whole month, you know, I'm not ripped yet. Well, it, it doesn't work that way, you know, yeah. kind of like with the compound effect we're saying. Exactly. Exactly. And it's easy to kind of think short term, oh, what the here and now it's not, you know, it's not happening right now. I'm getting discouraged. I want to stop. I want to give up. Okay. Right. Go ahead, Edgar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Thank you. Hey, hey. I, uh, I read the uh, Darren Hardy with the compound effect in the, the fabulous of the Esoku. He said uh -huh. the, the torture and the ravage. Yeah, he said uh, he preferred to be the tortoise because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he can persevere and uh, constantly continues to reach mm -hmm. the objective. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, that is difficult because we try to, to invent uh, the, the life the amazing tools like I want to I want I try to, to play piano I want to to study English I want to to finish my MBA I want to to play soccer I want to <laughs> yeah uh, a lot of things but uh, uh, to be consistent is difficult uh, mm -hmm. because uh, the people like me want uh, all quickly Right. <laughs> yep. We want it now. It's a really hard. And so some other, yeah, thank you for your thoughts. That really helped that. I think it's like we say, it's a human experience. All of us are experiencing that. Um, and once we can kind of catch the vision of the tortoise, like you're saying, there's the tortoise and the hare. If we can catch the vision of the tortoise and really like what the power of what that tortoise has, when we just have that slow, consistent pace, um, it really just changes the way we look at success and the way we look at our goals. It's not the here and now, it's the, it's the long game, okay? So other barriers, you know, it is a lot of work, you know? And one thing that, that I, I have done for myself and I help my kids do, and I don't know if anybody know, I, I have five boys. I have, I have a mother of five kids. <laughs> And my youngest is eight weeks old, so we're just, we're just coming out from a baby, having a new baby here. And so as I'm teaching them, I'm trying to train them to think of work as a positive thing, right? So because if you know me, you know that I love thinking, you know, I love talking about our thoughts and how our thoughts create our actions mm -hmm. and our thoughts create our feelings and our feelings create our actions. Okay, so if we're thinking positively about work, we're going to be more excited about doing work, right? So if we can look at work, and I think that's, that can be such a hang up for people is that when we see work as such a bad thing, it's like, oh, we have to avoid work at all costs, then we're going to run away from some of these habits and some of these long term things. But if we can change our mind, and I think a lot of you have done this, but reframe our thoughts around habits and goals. This is a difficult thing. My husband is, is very much has a rabbit mentality <laughs> and he's trying to be more of a tortoise, but he, he loves the, the just like, I want to change it all right now. And um, so he's been working on that, his thought process around work and, and even discipline and having to do things a certain way. He resists that so much. He doesn't want to be put in constraints, I guess. But that's where the freedom really comes. All right, so another one is they expect quick fixes, okay? So let's talk about kind of the choices. Um, and our choices lead to these habits and this consistency, okay? So tips to make good choices. All right, gratitude. And just like I was talking about, we have to steer our mind in a positive direction. If we just let our mind, if we don't, we don't direct our mind, it's going to go all over the place. So if we're like, oh, the gym didn't work. I went for two weeks. I, you know, and it didn't work. We have to, we have to work on the thought process along that, you know, with that. Is, is that, am I looking for just a quick fix? Am I looking to be healthy? Am I 
you know, and I am so grateful for my body, even though it might be overweight or I just had a baby and I have some, you know, weight to lose. I love my body. I'm grateful for my body and I want to give it health and strength, you know, versus, oh, I'm the worst. I'm, you know, I have all this extra weight. How could I have done that? Um, you know, why, why did I have that extra donut <laughs> or kind of beating ourselves up into change versus filling our minds with positivity and growth. Okay. So think about that as we're, as you're going into this is like, where is my mind? Am I, am I thinking in a positive way and a way of gratitude or the opposite? Um, take responsibility. Okay. This is one of my favorite, favorite concepts. If we really are going to see the power of the compound effect, we have to recognize that every result we have in life is created by us, okay? I have the tendency to wanna to blame everybody else. <laughs> I don't know, that's the human condition that I am plagued with. <laughs> but I want, to, I want to say, well, it's because of this, it's because of this that I didn't get the results that I wanted. But I have to practice taking responsibility for everything. Not, this is my fault, like I'm gonna shame myself for it, but saying, in what way have I created this result? And owning that so that I can change it, because that's where the power is, right? Is when we take responsibility, then we have the power to change it. Because if we know it's up, it was our, our doing, then we can undo it as well, okay? And I just want to apologize. I can only really see five videos at once. So even if you have your video, if you're like raising your hand or something and I don't see you, it's just because I probably can't see your video. Um, so just be sure to speak up um, if you have some comments here. Uh, well, I would like to share that I think uh, taking yeah. uh, responsibility um, is not a thought uh, in our mm -hmm. family or in our a school uh, anywhere and in, in in the work workplace as well because um, uh, people are we are taught to white uh, to um, we are to to white to in fear in fear and uh, in obligation uh, so uh, of course uh, in my workplace um, uh, sometimes I I complain to others and other complain <laughs> about my work as well uh, but I had to to uh, take um, take care and uh, take my responsibility and uh, mm -hmm. to solve the problem. Yeah, and to be aware that uh, uh, we have to take a responsibility. But uh, yes. my brain is so wired. Yeah, it's so wired that way yes. to complain. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Our human brain just wants to do that, and you're absolutely right. That like that is a tendency that we all fall into. And the more, the more we take responsibility, really the more power we have um, over, or the results we have in our life. I think All that right. the, yeah. the compound effect can be applied to complaining uh, because the more we complain, the more we complain. And yes. the more we are grateful, the less we complain. So yes. it, it yeah. works in the most amazing way. Yeah, and I love how you brought that up because the compound effect is always working, whether it's to our benefit or to our detriment, right? Either to help us succeed or help us lead to more kind of failures, right? Yeah, the, the more you blame others, uh, the less you take responsibility and so on. Yeah, so it's com the compounding, but in the opposite direction that we want. <laughs> Yep, okay. So another thing he says, tips to make good choices, take advantage of luck. So preparation, good attitude, find the opportunity, take action, and tracking. He's all about tracking. And the biggest, the biggest uh, reason for tracking, um, tracking meaning just keeping track of what our actions, how we're using our time, what we're putting into our mouth, what we're putting into our heads, you know, just paying attention and bringing that awareness then allows us to actually do something about it. Because how often are we doing something that we don't even know that we're doing? <laughs> we don't even realize that we're having that extra candy in the afternoon, or we don't even realize that we, you know, have skipped several days in our English practice um, or things like that. So, and it's never late, too late to start. Go ahead. 
Uh, I have something to share about tracking because I've yeah. experienced that. Uh, so I play the guitar and I, as a musician, you're always stuck in a rut. And last year I, I experienced amazing results because I started experiencing the magic of tracking. So I had these challenges way out of my comfort zone and I thought that I'd never make it. And I started tracking, I sucked very much, but then every day would improve by 1% or less. And like in two weeks, uh, I got it done. Like a crazy song I wanted to play, I, th I thought I would never be able to play. And it was like, <laughs> I had done it. And uh, the funny thing is that when you get there at the top of the mountain, you don't really care because it, it doesn't matter. What matters is the, the process. Uh, you, you have to have fun while you're doing it, not because you want an end result because you're not going to be satisfied because you're going to want more money or more of everything. Yes. I love that you brought that up. It's the journey, not the destination that matters, right? It's, it's, if we're, if we're looking at developing habits for our lifetime, it's not about getting to the end. <laughs> it's about what happens throughout the process and enjoying the process. So that, that tracking, that's really interesting how, probably the tracking gave you more confidence to be able to actually like reach that goal, right? There was probably yeah. a lot more of just like, oh, it's just math. It's just a matter of this, this, and this, and I'm gonna get that result. And I, actually it's very easy to motivate yourself because when you track, you can see it as a game. And when you start this mm -hmm. gamification process, yeah. Uh, you're having more and more fun. So you, you keep track of the numbers, yeah. maybe the amount of, of minutes you spend. Uh, you say, okay, if, if I miss one day, that's fine, but not two days in a row because I know that I will start uh, doing less. So one day is fine, but not two days. And, and by tracking, you get to know yourself more and uh, you see what worked in the past, what to, you have to work on, what didn't work. Uh, what goes through your mind while you're doing something and it's it's a fun process that's awesome yeah i love that such a powerful concept that tracking okay so um how do we get started with these habits and goals like how do we make how do we get this momentum going and he talks about big mo right in this book the big mo is the momentum it's getting the getting the train started at first the train is just kind of creep you know to get a train started takes a huge effort to get a spaceship out into the out atmosphere, atmosphere takes a huge effort, but then once it gets going, then we're rolling, right? Then we've got the momentum working for us and not against us, okay? So how do we even get started? How do we start that process? Okay, we have to resist that instant gratification. We've talked about that. We have to be looking long-term. We have to find our why. Okay, and we've talked about this before, but understanding our why, why are we going to the gym? Why are we learning English? You know, why, and it has to be, it has to, we have to really feel it and really understand it. Okay, to really find our way and know why, what, what's driving this? Okay, what fuel is driving us? Is it fuel that's gonna really help us long-term or is it going to be, you know, short-lived? Okay, define your core values. You know, when, we, when we're making decisions based on values, like I, I value my health, I value, I value me as a person, that's going, to be, that's going to be more motivating in getting ourselves to the gym or I value communication. I value being able to communicate clearly with people so that I can have that connection with you. Um, I value uh, learning and development. I matter, I value myself enough to know that I value personal development and growth and improvement. Um, so those core values really do get to the heart of it and living in integrity with those core values. Our, is our external, are our actions and our behaviors matching our core values? And that's integrity is when those match up, okay? And really, I love, I love think, talking about those concepts when it comes to communication. 
because we all know when someone's talking about something like a core value that they, you know, oh, I believe in this and this and this, but really like their actions say something else. <laughs> so they're, they're communicating whether in words or in actions, communication is happening, right? And what do we tend to believe more? Someone who tells it, the words that they're saying or their actions? Action. Absolutely, okay. So, so communication it, it encompasses it all. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, let's see. Anybody have anything to say kind of about that? Any thoughts? All right, we, we'll kind of, so the next one is find who and what you're fighting. You know, sometimes there's just a motivation, a drive, because you're just, you're, there's a fight inside of you. Just like, I believe this strongly and I'm ready to fight for it. So for me, it's, I believe strongly, very strongly. And it's just that I feel this like fight feeling <laughs> when I, when I think about it is that everyone deserves a voice and that no one should be silenced. Okay. And that's, that's such a core motivation for me in helping people communicate better and, and teaching pronunciation and commute in and, and English is because I see how people stop talking when they don't feel confident to speak up or they, you know, or they um, don't share their expertise or share their knowledge or share, share what they have because of the way they speak the language. And it, there's a fight in me. <laughs> you know, just like, I want you to have a voice <laughs> and we got to fight for that voice. Okay. So that's kind of a, a fight. Does anybody have an experience where they feel like there's just kind of this fight inside of them? that helps drive them into, into accomplishing some of their goals? <laughs> I think we all have, have this kind of experience. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Amadou. Yes, because um, uh, in my personal experience, uh, when, I, when, I, when I was young, so I used to stand up and the, mm -hmm. Every, every time I have I had uh, something to, to say, it was difficult for me because uh, I was uh, this pro this problem to speak properly. Mm -hmm. And then uh, growing up, I overcome this situation, and now I feel more confident because uh, I did a lot of, a lot of exercise of relaxation. Uh, mm -hmm. I saw a specialist, and that uh, had me. That I think that it's all about. Con about how you you see yourself and about confidence experience and uh, when you share something an, an idea or this kind of thing you know that the thing that you want to share is more important than the way you speak does that make sense yes very much yes i love that yeah, and I think that when we do have a weakness or have something that we struggle with we fight harder for you know, to overcome it, come it to the point where it tends to become more of our strengths, right? Is that, you know, you have had to struggle through your communication and now you value your communication skills so much more and, you know, have really made a specific effort towards building that communication and it's become such a strength for you now or and it continues to do so. That's wonderful. Good example. Thank you. Um, okay, so how do we get started with these habits and goals? We set and achieve, set and achieve goal, or how do we start habits? Is that we set and achieve goals? So smart goals. Does anybody heard know what a smart goal is? Have you ever heard of this? Mm, yes. So, yeah. Go ahead. I, I'm not sure, but uh, I think the M stands for measurable. Um, Maybe T stands for time. You need to to yeah. to say when you're going to achieve it, achieve it. But it's something along those lines, I think. Yeah. So smart is so it's an acronym. So S is stands for specific. We want to have like a specific goal. M is measurable. Okay. A is achievable. So we want don't want to make goals that are just kind of like out in the air. Like I'm going to fly, right? <laughs> something that's achievable. Um, R is relatable. I think it, I think it is realistic, relatable. Maybe? Possibly realistic. realistic. Maybe. Sorry. I, 
of course, my printer didn't print out my notes today, so I don't have them in front of me. <laughs> um, so, and then T is time bound. You're right. So T is time bound. So just Google SMART goals and you'll be able to see kind of the acronym and um, find that out. But I found that having specific goals, my brain doesn't want me to set SMART goals because um, then it means I have to really work hard on it. <laughs> Whereas if we throw a goal out there and we're like, oh, I hope to do this then it becomes easier to just let go of the goal. But when we set SMART goals of just like, I'm getting up every morning and doing this, and you know, we set very specific measurable time bound goals, it kind of locks us into that goal even more, which also is empowering because it's like, I know I'm gonna get that. So, uh, you know, we were talking about improving, like learning a song on the, who was saying that? That learning the song on the guitar. Um, yeah, I was saying that. Yeah, so that the specific, you, you set a specific goal and you were tracking it. Mm -hmm. So that's that's considered a SMART goal. Yeah, and I, I had a, a time constraint as well. I had set a month to achieve it and I got it done in two weeks. Awesome, awesome. Okay, and then become the person you want to be. So I have a, a, a story about this is that my son, we were, we were going somewhere together in the car and he opened the door and um and i was like oh don't hit the car next to you you know as he was opening the door make sure you don't hit the car next to you and he and so it led to this whole discussion of like well what happens if you hit the car next to you with your door you know like how do you do that if they're not there and so i was explaining to them that you can write a note on the windshield to say oh i'm sorry i did this here's my number you know and he asked the question well well, what if I hit the door and I didn't say anything, I just left? Kind of like, oh, good, there's a way to get out of this, you know, responsibility because I was telling him sometimes it can cost a lot of money to repair and things like that. And I told him, I said, well, you can do that. Like, if you want to just leave and not take responsibility for that, you could do that. That's a choice you have. But is that the kind of person you want to be? Oh, that's good. And... And so he thought about that and he's like, oh no, that's not, you know, that's not who I want to be. Um, and so we kind of have to check ourselves to be like, okay, you know, like what kind of person do I want to be? Do I want to be the kind of person that always has to have those instant gratification, to have the instant results, to have it now? Or do I want to be the kind of person that can do things consistently over time? Who do I want to become? Mm -hmm. um, in this process. And I think that the compound effect and really living the compound effect in our lives helps us become such a grounded, solid person. <laughs> you know, you think of a tortoise, it's heavy, right? There's, there's a heaviness to the tortoise. It's grounded. It's, you know, there's a strong base there. And I think that's symbolic um, in a lot of ways. Okay, so we have, yeah, I liked this, this like formula that he had in the book. It's you, you know, you, you have your choice, which is your, just you know, your decision in it, your behavior, which is your action, your habit. So a habit is a repeated action, mm -hmm. compounded over time, right, is your goal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's kind of the formula that we have here. So... There, I've had a goal to learn Spanish for, I wanted to learn another language, okay? And, you know, I'm in my 30s. I had gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, I didn't learn it growing up. All of my students are very motivating to me. <laughs> They've all learned, if not one other language, multiple languages, very motivating to me. Um, I see how speaking in someone's mother tongue, you know, is such a connecting thing because you all have made the effort to learn English. So now that we, so now we can connect. Okay. That's amazing. It's amazing what you've done um, here. And so I'm like, I've, I really want to be able to do this. I live in Arizona and there's a lot of Spanish speakers here. So I was like, okay, Spanish is my language here. We're going to do this. And I've had this goal out here, but I didn't make it a smart goal. You know, I hadn't made it a SMART goal. I hadn't figured out exactly why or how. And so this year I said, you know what? I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to start using the compound effect in my life. And we're going to just start small because I'm, this is a lifelong goal, right? I have many years to come to really learn the, this language. 
And just like you, you guys started at some point. At some point you said, I'm gonna learn English, <laughs> okay? And I'm really curious, and after I kind of share this, I want to, I want to hear how you guys got started with your, you know, if you guys have experiences where it was kind of that slow compound effect. But I started, I downloaded an app called Duolingo, Duolingo and I started doing it. And just even five, 10 minutes a day working through this app, and yesterday I got to a hundred days in a row. Ooh. And Congratulations. Uh, you talk about gamification, you know, they gamify this app and it's really nice <laughs> because because <laughs> if I miss, you know, if I'm close to missing, they let me know. So I'm at, up there at like 1155 at night, you know, with my, <laughs> sometimes with my phone going, I gotta get mine in for the day. Um, so, but I've seen the compound effect because I look at where I started and I'm nowhere near where I want to be and even being conversational here, but I realized that, okay, I'm going to make a choice. I'm going to take an action. I'm going to repeat that action over time. And I know I'm going to get that result that I want. Okay. I want to hear from some of you kind of like, what was, what was your beginnings with English? It, did you take in a, have you, have you been taking this compound effect um, process? Like what, what is it that you experienced in your life or how did you kind of get that momentum going? I think that I used that compound effect, but I didn't realize that I actually used the compound effect. So mm -hmm. I think that we have a similar um, experience that uh, I wanted to learn Spanish because mm -hmm. as you know, I've been working at Disneyland. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you work at Disneyland, you have to speak Spanish. So okay. when I uh, began to work at Disneyland, I didn't speak Spanish. So mm -hmm. I, did, I, had, I had to learn because uh, everybody asked me questions in Spanish. I, I didn't know how to answer. So my colleague helped me to learn maybe two or three words a day, and then three words. And uh, after a few months, I was able to speak Spanish because without realizing, I set smart goal. Mm -hmm. I was like, today I'm going to learn three words, then six. And after a few months, I end up with a uh, hundred of words. And then another hundred after months, and uh, I was able to speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. And then I did the same thing with English and then Spanish. And now okay. today I'm able to speak six languages. You know? Wow, that's so, amazing. This is yeah. So I started with Spanish, then English, and then Italian and Russian. And now I'm able to go back and yeah. forth between Spanish and English. So my level is not the same level as, uh, as English or Spanish. But right. I'm able to carry on the conversation. So, and yeah. uh, I didn't realize that I set smart goals. Yeah. And, uh, now it's amazing. And then um, I had this dream to be a polyglot, and now here I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's awesome. I think all of you are examples of the compound effect. I mean, this, what you're doing right now with your English, all of you, is the compound effect, whether you knew that that's what it was called or not. <laughs> You, language is a perfect example of you can't learn language right away. You can't learn it really fast. It's not possible. It has to be a you know compounding um, experience. Um, and so as we get as you get to this level in your English, I think some of our students come and they're like, "Oh, I want to I want to fix my accent right now, or I want to you know get rid of my accent right now in two weeks." And yeah. I. I'm like, uh, this isn't the place for you then, sorry. <laughs> we have to do some thought work uh, around that because, um, because that's just not how it's done. This is, this is a process. This takes time. This is, takes commitment. And, and we're committed to making it happen. And the more we take that slow and steady approach, the more it's going to last. Okay, we might be able to fix it, you know, fix, fix it in two weeks for one passage that you, or one presentation that you have to do. But if you want it to last, we have to take a, a more slow and steady approach. Does anybody else have any thoughts? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> when you said it's a small fix, it reminds me of the, um, I don't know the English word for it, but the, the symptoms you wanna, you wanna, um, 
So you have a, a hole in the in the wall, but uh, it doesn't work if you just cover it on the surface. You gotta make some deep work in, in order for it to be fixed for okay. forever. Otherwise, that's yeah. not gonna work. Right. It's like a, if you're working on a, on a floor that's not uh, stable with a strong foundation, it's gonna mm -hmm. uh, crash. Right. Absolutely. We have to really get to the foundation of it of things when we really want to rebuild something hmm. or build something strong it starts with a really strong foundation you're mm -hmm. absolutely right excellent well good okay so getting rid of bad habits and i you know this is a lot has to do with pronunciation when we're we're dealing with pronunciation not only we have to get rid of the bad habits we have to replace them with good habits so in the book he talks about um know, know your triggers clean house. So one thing that I thought of when he was saying clean house is, is like, if you're trying to lose weight or whatever, don't keep junk food in your house, right? And so, um, you know, I'm trying to lose some, some extra baby weight, you know, I just had a baby, we want to lose some weight. And then the Girl Scouts come, come to the door. You know, I don't know if anybody, uh, any of you know, like in, in the U.S., the Girl Scouts get, sell these cookies that are so just good. the most uh, delicious cookies ever. <laughs> Am so I right, good. you guys? <laughs> yeah, so good. Okay, so they have these Samoas, they're called, that are just my favorite. <laughs> and so they come to the door. I buy a couple boxes. The first day that they're there, I'm like, this is too hard. <laughs> this is too hard. I need to get rid of these cookies. <laughs> So I, I pass them out to my kids Have the next day, have them take them to school for their lunches. And I'm like, they cannot be in my house. So that was the first thing that I thought of when he was, he was talking about clean house is like, let's get rid of some of those things that tempt us to do what we don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, swap it, meaning let's replace our bad habits with good habits. You know, how can we swap it out? Ease in and or jump in. So I liked this concept. Does any, can anybody kind of tell me who read it, what he means by easing in or the example he gave by is it easing in or jumping in? Do you guys remember this? Uh, he was talking about how they would go to a lake that was so cold um, oh. with his dad and his dad always wanted him to just jump in. Mm -hmm. And Arjun, do you remember? Not, uh, not specifically, but what I'm kind of thinking is, it's kind of yeah. like in that diving board, when you're standing at a diving board, when you're trying to ease in, in that, um, you know, in the water, um, it's, it's so hard because of, it's the, sometimes it's the first step is so hard, but when you just jump in and um, uh, it's, it, you, when, you, when you just jump in, you just did it. And so I couldn't mm -hmm. remember exactly. Um, so. so the way he kind of uses this analogy is that he was kind of promoting the idea of easing into our habits and kind of creating small, you know, small incremental changes. Because a lot of times we can't change all of our habits all at once. Um, it's too much for us, okay? So he was saying sometimes when getting into cold water, it's, it's nice to just kind of ease in versus just jumping in. Mm -hmm. But he said, and you could use that analogy both ways because I always tell my boys, just jump in. <laughs> you know, if it's cold, just jump in. It'll, you know, then the, it uh, lessens the, the shock or whatever is just momentary. Okay, but, I think I remember now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so the concept, yeah, go ahead, Anjan. No, I think, uh, I think he, he described a story about uh, two um, story from, I think one of his uh, secretary and one of it is uh, a guy that wants to run a marathon. And mm -hmm. so, um, mm -hmm. and so uh, she wanted to, her motivation was her, uh, I think the high school reunion is about to come up and she want to do a, a marathon. And he said, well, at the same time, you know, she, it, when she look at marathon, it's like 23 miles or something like that. And what he recommended her was just easing in to where um, instead of running right away, why don't you just walk the first day uh, for the next you know, week and then the next week you uh, maybe power walk 
And then as time progressed on, she's able to, from walking to power walk, to jog, to running, and then, you know, running a mile to, to 13 miles and then running a marathon. So I think that was a, a very, very powerful because uh, I kind of equate that to working out as well. Uh, mm -hmm. to where sometimes I want to work out five times a week. But mm -hmm. in reality, and his his message was, you may be able to do it in, in the next week, a month or three months, but eventually mm -hmm. you're going to get tired of it. So what you want to do is ease in, and then eventually you're going to jump into where it will become a habit that it will be hard to break it. Yes. So. Yes. Beautifully explained. That's exactly the concept here with the easing in versus jumping in. Yeah, exactly. And I found, and you guys would probably kind of relate to this, is that at first when I was starting the Spanish, you know, program, it was like every single word was really hard for my brain to kind of latch on to. But now there's kind of a momentum going with it. Whereas like he was, you know, Arjun was saying is that once you start, you know, running, then you're wanting to run more and more and more. And as I'm picking up a little bit more momentum with with the vocabulary and with the structure, I'm seeing how it comes together and it's more motivating to me. Before I could get, you know, I was doing maybe five minutes. Now I want to give more time to it because I see how I'm progressing and I'm, you know, I'm learning in it. And so I'm finding more time through my day to fit it in. Um, and so there's just kind of that easing into it. If I had just said, I'm going to do two hours of Spanish every day, you were right from the beginning. Oh, that habit would not have, have lasted a hundred days. <laughs> it would not, I would have quit very quickly, <laughs> but if we, we can ease into these goals and ease into these, these things, then the momentum starts picking up and then we can increase if we want but it becomes more of a steady and consistent. Um, yeah, I, I want to say that the, the hardest part is just getting started. So whether it's mm -hmm. one minute or two minutes, just get started and then mm -hmm. you'll find you're in, you're, you are enjoying it and you won't want to <laughs> stop. So don't, don't tell yourself, okay, I'm going to practice an hour every day. Just get started, right. uh, get your trigger and uh, see what happens. And yes. uh, I want to say for you as well, that Spanish pronunciation is quite easy because there are no tricks like in English. You just say what yes. you see. So <laughs> once yes. you know how it works, yeah. It gives me a lot of compassion for all of you because I'm like, oh, how easy. It's spelled the way it sounds. You know, like it's <laughs> spelled the way it sounds. How convenient. <laughs> I wish that were the same for English for all of you. <laughs> Very difficult. Um, but yeah, you get you very good point there. Okay, so he talks a lot about routines and getting getting set up on routines. Um, kind of the set it and forget it mentality. It's just like we set it, we don't have to decide again whether that thing is going to happen. So if we're, you know, as we're relating to pronunciation practice, I really love the idea if you're having a hard time doing 20, 30 minutes of practice a day commit to five minutes, you know, commit to five minutes every day. And then let's kind of build from there. Um, same thing with routines is let's commit to a time that this is going to happen, that a time that we're going to dedicate to a day, a time, whatever it needs to be dedicating to that. So right now my, my Spanish time is what I'm feeding my baby. And it happens a few times throughout the day. And so, you know, there's, there's just that consistency of like, okay, I know that this, when I sit down to feed my baby, here's what I'm doing <laughs> while I'm doing that. Um, how have you guys experienced kind of fitting things into your routine versus just like, oh, I'm going to do this goal versus I'm going to do this goal at this time? You guys have... Mm. Yeah, I, I want to say something, but if someone else wants to speak, because I, I already mentioned a few things. Anybody else have some ideas there? Yes, I have an idea, but I, yeah. I, I have already spoken, so <laughs> I can give you okay. Me too. I'm just like, somebody else needs to, you know, maybe share. 
Kim, what about you? I see your video there. Well, uh, to help me set the uh, routine, I'm, uh, I found that I, I set a, a, you know, a prompter uh, for mm -hmm. 10 minutes. Uh, and so it helped me that uh, my brain is not going to tell me, wow, you, you, it will take you too long, one hour. But I'm tricking my brain. It's no, it's just ten minutes. <laughs> and <after laughs> yes. 10 minutes, yeah, I go another ten minutes, yes. and and uh, and that's why I could do my full uh, action assessment because it's very complicated. You know, uh, the exercise is very complicated. Uh, so I did that way and to went through. Uh, I was so happy that uh, I found the strategy, but it works uh, yeah. not very not all the time, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, I love that. Let's trick our brain and just say, oh, I'm just going to do it for two minutes. We can do yeah. anything for two minutes, right? And then yeah. once we get into it, then it's okay to keep going. <laughs> yes. I love that. Um, and just to let everybody know, I know we're going to kind of got to go over um, time. We'll probably go for another 20 minutes or so. Um, so if anybody has to leave, you're not offending me in any way um, if you have to leave. So I understand we're kind of at the hour. Um, all right, habits, how to craft new positive habits. Okay, set yourselves up to succeed. So kind of have, make sure that you're setting the stage for those positive habits to happen. Think addition, not subtraction. So like, what am I adding to my life instead of taking away? So a lot of, a lot of times, instead of thinking about like the bad habits that we're needing to break with pronunciation, think I'm going to, I'm going to add this new habit of how to do the, do the sound or um, listen to the sound. Um, accountability helps having someone that you're accountable to, right? That's a lot of times why the coaching helps a lot with our plus or premier package is because we have our, our trainer there ready to help you <laughs> and be accountable to and um, show, you know, you have to submit that assignment or things like that. So finding someone that you can be accountable to when you have a goal really helps you be able to accomplish that. And I don't know, you know, he said he had these as separate things, accountability and finding a success buddy, a lot of the same concept. Make it a competition, like we talked about kind of the gamification, you know, if we can kind of gamify it, sometimes it'll keep, you know, it keeps us more interested, especially just starting, like we were talking about. Once we're going, it's a lot easier to maintain that habit, but getting started sometimes helps that, that competition can help us get started. And then celebrate it, have a reward at the end. If you're, if you're wanting to uh, get healthier, don't make the reward food. <laughs> Find something else that we can, you know, we can do to reward ourselves. So we've kind of already talked about it, but just big mo. He calls it being big mo is that momentum of once we get started, watch out. Okay, that momentum is going and that train is full, you know, full speed ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, and a lot, of, a lot of this comes into routines, but if we bookend your days, does anybody kind of remember what that concept meant, is the bookend your days? Yeah, uh, basically you, you wanna you wanna be sure that you have a morning routine and an evening routine, so whatever happens in between, if all helps break loose, you, you still have, you've made it, you've worked for yourself, so it doesn't matter as much. Yeah, you, you, it grounds you. You kind of, you start your day. And we, you know, a book that we did was Miracle Morning um, a while back. And Miracle Morning, the Miracle Morning is um, all about the morning routine and how powerful that morning routine can be. And that's something that I believe very strongly in too. The first couple of hours of my day are my very most important. So from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m., that, that's where the magic happens <laughs> for me. Um, and then kind of how do we unwind? How do we kind of end the day? Um, so really being conscious of our routines at the beginning of the day and the end of the day. Does anybody kind of have any thoughts about that? What's helped for you? I have a habit actually about that. Oh, you do? So, okay. Yes. Yeah, so as I said, so I speak uh, several languages now. So I have a uh, one hour coming to uh, one hour commute to work so mm -hmm. 
every time I take uh, this time uh, during my commute to study English in the morning mm -hmm. and uh, Spanish uh, in the evening. And the other day, Italian in the morning, Russian in the evening. And uh, yeah. I built this habit for maybe, maybe years. So I think that um, when you build a consistent habit, mm -hmm. the one day you don't study, you, you will feel bad because you, you feel that you didn't do your job and you even more, more motivated. Yeah. And I like how you describe it as a habit because, because a habit is something that you kind of do involuntarily. I mean, it still takes effort for you to do that, but you've already decided mm -hmm. that that's what you do. You've been doing it for years. And the big part of what you said was it feels uncomfortable not doing it now. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Exactly. And the uh, and the uh, I like this habit because uh, it's a, a time that I use in an effective way. Because instead mm -hmm. of sitting down listening to music, so I I can read. It, but studying, it's a it's a it's a kind of uh, you you talk about rewarding yourself. So from 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 for me, it's a big win to study during my commute as the train is, as the train is moving. And for me, uh, at the end of my commute, I feel very good about that because I use my time effectively. That's a great use of time. In the book, he calls it Drive Time University. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where he, he says that someone had encouraged him to keep all sorts of like self-help, motivational you know, CDs that he listens to while he drives to use that time you know, to teach his brain. And if you really add up all of the time that we have in our commute and we realize, wow, I could use that to, you know, improve my thought product process and, you know, in, and use that time for learning and growth, that is powerful, powerful compound effect. <laughs> all right, good. He says, shake it up every once in a while. Just like with exercise, if you do the same routine every day, you're not going to make as big of progress as if we kind of change the routine a little bit every once in a while and, um, and kind of create that muscle confusion there. Um, this has to be, you know, shaking it up and keeping consistent or something we have to, there's a fine line there. You know, you want to stay consist consistent in the core habit, but as far as how it's done, you know, you can, you know, shake, shake it up, make it so that it's not so boring, I guess. <laughs> and um, so you'll stay with it long term. And then getting into a rhythm, kind of tracking and getting into that rhythm really is, uh, creates that momentum. Okay, so he talks about um, influences and he talks about garbage in, garbage out. And I like the analogy of, he has, he talks about a cup. Hey, does anybody remember this with like dirty water in it? And you have a cup of dirty water and it's kind of representing kind of maybe just the garbage that we've accumulated in our minds um, over the course of a day or a week or a lifetime, whatever. Um, like things from the media, things from, you know, maybe negative people in our environment, our own thoughts, things like that. Is you kind of have this glass of dirty water. In order to flush that out, you can fill the cup with clean water. And as the clean water kind of goes through, it'll overflow, you know, overflow and the dirty water is replaced by the clean water. Mm -hmm. okay? So that was the analogy that he gave. And I like that visual because it um, represents kind of what are we putting into our minds? Mm -hmm. what, are our, what are we putting into our environment? So we have kind of our environment that influences us we have kind of the media, what are, what's on our phones, what's, you know, news, um, our social media kind of feeds. How many times have I, have I had to like clean house on my <laughs> social media <laughs> just to kind of weed out anything that's dragging, dragging me down? Um, people in our lives being very specific, specific, specific about who we surround ourselves with. He spent a lot of time in this book talking about that. You know, what else? What are some other examples in your life of influences that you've noticed are either helping you 
lead you to, you know, your goals and those habits and those who are those influences that are taking you away. Just name out some things that, that for you, for you guys. Well, sometimes it's, it's, it's in my work where, okay. um, yeah, I just, you know, I mean, it's not negative or anything, but you know, when you, they don't think the way you think and mm. they don't have the same goals that you are, you know, it's hard to communicate with them. And mm -hmm. so uh, just, just being mindful of uh, how much influence you allow them to, um, you know, to speak into your life because yet again, you know, I, I, I view us uh, people's, um, you know, how, uh, you know, the fruit of their life uh, because if they are not, you know, like I said, if they're just, like I said, average where, you know, same old thing where they're not really influencing or adding value, it's just hard to, you know, get uh, advice from them. And so mm -hmm. just being mindful of, uh, you know, the people that, uh, like, in, like you said, um, you know, the people that we surround ourselves because we are, we become the, we become the person that we are based on the people we associate with. Mm hmm and he talks about kind of the five people that you're closest to. You're kind of tend to be the average income and, yeah. and average of those five people yeah. that and you spend the most time with. Absolutely. And work yeah. is a, something I spend a lot too, but. <laughs> yeah. I like how he talks about how, you know, with mentors and teachers and things, it doesn't even have to be someone that you personally know. <laughs> Cause yes. I, like I listen, there's certain podcasts that I listen to regularly and I consider them my mentors, even though I, and teachers, I, I don't personally engage with them or have conversations with them, but boy, do they have an influence on me. Yes. Yeah. I love, um, it's funny you mentioned mentorship, uh, cause, uh, it's, it's, it's so powerful because, uh, actually well, I consider you as a mentor when it comes to, you know, uh, when it's, when it comes to are uh, you teaching us on how to be fluent in English or mm -hmm. sounding clear? Uh, and so um, mentor is really, really powerful because when you don't have a mentor, it's, uh, sometimes it's hard to do it on your own. And so. Um, well, thank you. Thank you. And that's a responsibility that I feel I, I don't take lightly. I want to make sure that if you, if, if others are looking to me to mentor them, that I need to make sure that I am building myself in a way that can be a positive influence um, to others. And I know all of you are in that situation, whether you feel like it or not, you are mentoring someone. <laughs> you are being teaching someone, you are helping someone and, and having an influence on other people. And so kind of thinking to yourself, what, in, what kind of influence am I to others? And what am I bringing to that environment and to, that, to the people around me? I think that's a <clears throat> powerful thought. Okay, consistency. Um, I think when we, when we kind of sum up this book, to me, consistency is kind of that, that main idea, is that the compound effect cannot happen without consistency. Um, it's, it's in that skill of consistency that we really find the power. Hmm. Okay. It's what's probably the hardest for all of us as humans to do is to stay consistent with things, but hopefully some of these strategies of easing in and kind of how to get the momentum going and routines and some of these things that we've talked about today will help you stay consistent. I think of it in terms of, you know, we talked about kind of easing into the water versus jumping in. And I think of it in terms of like, if I'm sitting there easing into the water and then I have someone else jumping in and then jumping and then being like, oh, that's too cold, I'm jumping out. And then they dry off and they're like, wait, but I wanna go swimming. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna jump in again. Oh, I'm gonna jump back out. <laughs> it's too cold. The momentum, we cannot create momentum that way. We lose a lot when we start and stop and start and stop, okay? Mm -hmm. So finding ways to be able to start slowly and build from there is going to be our superpower in life. Okay, this is, what is this, my, one of my favorite. Hello, my name is Consistency. I make it happen day in and day out. You might know my friend Success. We're always hanging out. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I like this one. That's good. <laughs> Gotta love it. Okay, so that's the that's the hope that I have for all of us 
you know, all of us in this journey as humans, trying to really improve and work and, and grow is that we can develop this skill set so that we can see the power of the compound effect in our own lives. Okay. I want nice to, to hear. You, consistency. <laughs> nice to, yeah, nice to meet you, consistency. <laughs> Now I want to hear as we kind of end here, I'm going to pull up for those of you who uh, are here, I want to hear kind of like a takeaway, you know, what is your key takeaway and just maybe a minute or so just saying what, what is your key takeaway here today. So Matthew, what's, what was your takeaway here. I know you're saying oh, I didn't really read it. So I'm here to kind of listen and, and observe. So, so from what you heard today. Wait, you know, you didn't make, read it. That's right. You're the one, you had read it. Um, so what was your key takeaway as you have been listening today and as you read it yourself? Okay, I, I was just thinking, okay, I'm going to have to think hard about that question and, and think about what I'm going to say because right now uh, I'm the first to speak, so I, I don't have my thoughts okay. processed. So I'll just... Do you want me to come, come back, back to you? Yeah. Okay, does anyone want to volunteer for the first... First here. Yeah, I'd like to share. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Kim. Yeah, for me, I'm, it's, it's definitely the pathway to success. Uh, there, there's no way out. You know, uh, there's no way. It's the way. Uh, and I know that I, I have, uh, every one of us ha has all, all, already the core values and the persistence. You know, we, we, we just have to, to consciously decide to put on our path. That's all. We are a keeper uh, already, but just you have to to think about and uh, um, and so just to uh, uh, to to go go for it. Yeah, That's awesome. I'm, so, so happy, I'm so happy to to share this lesson because I I knew already, but yeah. uh, but not but not be aware of the powerful mm. tool. I'm so, so grateful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad you're here. That repetition, again, our human brain, we, we know these things, but we forget and we have to have that repetition to remind us and to keep revisiting these ideas so that we can, we can actually apply them and really work them into our lives. Yep. Excellent. Thank you, Kim. Okay. And uh, uh, Alicia, Alicia, is it Alicia? So let me, I think you're muted right now. There we go. You there? Oh, I can't hear you. Darn it. Um, the microphone's not working, but I'm glad you're here. I didn't see your video there for a while. So I apologize. We weren't able to kind of include you here in the discussion. Um, but I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, thumbs up. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you're here. Uh, okay, Gamzi, I want to hear your takeaway. Oh, um... Uh, thank you very much uh, for bringing this book, uh, Any. It was awesome. I like it very much. Uh, you know, I could not study my pronunciation course for a while. Uh -huh. So I, uh, I, I need an inspiration for uh, starting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> so it was very good for me. And I decided uh, I... I really, uh, I make a daily habit for my pronunciation course. Other than it is, it is really difficult and it's very easy to forget if you don't study. <clears throat> so, yeah. uh, Good. Okay. So it yes. was motivating to you to say, okay, yes. I'm, re I'm going to find a way to get it consistent yes. with the pronunciation yes. practice. Yes. Good. Thank you. Okay. Good. Arjan, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it will be, uh, he even talked about it in the book. He said, um, he said, success is the, six, you attract success by the person you become. And so uh, I love the analogy that you gave, uh, or the story that you gave us earlier that, you know, it was who, who do we want to become? So for me, it's just like, you know, uh, how awesome would my life be or anyone's life if we actually applied? knowing what we know now and just discussing uh, the things that we learned from you, what you discussed, you know, the compound impact, who are we going to become in the next 18 to 30 months um, by just, you know, doing a little bit more, uh, just staying consistency, consistent. And so uh, I'm just excited of 
who uh, I can be based on um, just staying consistency and staying steady and, um, you know, applying the compound effect with true time. And so, uh, but once again, I thank you for doing another book club. And so uh, I always <laughs> look, look forward to these uh, kind of discussions because uh, I can, you know, you, the, so the, I'm limited to my own knowledge. So I love, you know, getting feedback from other people as well. So, yeah, that's yes. wonderful. Good. Thank you. And I do want you guys to kind of just think of one thing, one thing that you can do, you know, that you can start doing and start doing consistently. Because they were talking about just kind of the, you know, making one small change in what you eat every day. If it's just 100 calories a day over a year, you're going to lose 10 pounds, right? <laughs> and so there's just that, like, what is there one thing that you can you can um, decide on today to say, I'm going to come up with a plan to do have a smart goal with it, to routine, something that I can ease into, you know, though, let's apply all these concepts. Okay, Dragos, what do you think? What's your one, what's your uh, takeaway? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, uh, you have to be very careful with the uh, kinds of uh, choices you make. Uh, because that's gonna that's gonna have an impact whether that be positive or negative on your uh, on your future. Um, uh, the second one would be try to make uh, at least baby steps um, to to make sure that you actually accomplish your goal, but uh, don't neglect any particular area of your life because that's gonna be uh, it's gonna have a negative impact on you later on down the line and then you're going to have to you're going to have to to play catch up which is going to which is going to slow you down later on so you're just going to have to make uh, even if you even if you make baby steps make sure you're you're actually covering uh, multiple areas uh, or as many areas as you can in your life so that way you get more like an overhaul uh, picture of whatever yeah. it is that you want to, whatever your uh, direction you, you want to head to. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, the, the, the third one I think would be uh, uh, just be careful and watch your habits. Uh, and uh, if you find yourself stepping into a, a more, uh, doing something which may have a, more of a negative connotation for your situation, just try and step away from it. And uh, again, uh, if, if, you, if you struggle to uh, step away from it at once, uh, is, again, you can try and make, uh, make it a gradual process and uh, uh, refrain from it as you go along. Yeah, and I love that. And you never, you never fail until you give up, right? So if, even if you're like, oh, I misstepped, and then I'm going to try again, <laughs> and I'm going to try it this way. Oh, that didn't work. I'm going to try it this way. You're still, you're still trying. And we give our, want to give, need to give ourselves credit for that. Is that um, this? We just keep trying. Um, yeah, I love that. Yeah, and you were talking about, you know, uh, just being aware in all areas. And that's that, that's that ripple effect too, is that, um, that as we d establish good habits in one area, a lot of times it spreads to others and, um, and has it a positive impact overall. So very good. Okay, Natalie, I apologize I, because I didn't see your video very well. I, I haven't uh, had you speak much, but um, Natalie, are you there? Yeah, hi Annie. Sorry, okay. I'm having a, I'm having a fever now, so I'm not in a oh, chatting okay. mo uh, mood. Okay. But no uh, you, you know, want to add kind of your takeaway at all? You know what? It's uh, so surprising as well. It's uh, not supposed to be that surprising, but uh, a lot of us, most of us, uh, sleepwalking through life, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes we make decisions based on our gut feeling, and we don't think much about it. So, um, you know, thinking back, I regret it that I read this book way too late into life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, you know, but, but I have achieved certain level of success that um, mm -hmm. I'm grateful for. 
but uh, and I, I have obtained certain good habits uh, you know going through life and build the person that I am today but yeah. still uh, you 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 uh, read the book and you think back and you say oh my god like I, I sleepwalk through most of my life and and make a lot of decisions based on my intuitions and sometimes based on my ego or my anger mm. and not necessarily have a more of like a guiding light um, or, or build certain kind of habits or certain kind of routine that, that you need to build into your system or your day so that you can achieve more success. Yeah. You know, well, I feel a bit inferior <laughs> reading the book. <laughs> Well, it's interesting because they say, you know, the, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is to plant it today, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, we cannot do anything about what has been because what we didn't know, we didn't know, right? What are, we, what are we to do? We didn't know, you know? And to just kind of be compassionate to ourselves and say, you know what? Had I known, I'd probably done it a little bit different, but now I know. And so now I'm going to, you know, move forward from here and just be compassionate to yourself, Natalie. I know that you're such a go-getter, so you want to, you want to be doing it right from the beginning, but, um, but you have been doing a lot of things very well and let's give ourselves credit for that. Okay. Thank you, Annie. Okay, good. Okay. Let's see. I'm do, and then we'll come back. We'll, we'll have the grand finale with you, Matthew. <laughs> Amadou, go ahead. Well, my first takeaway is the name of the book, of course, The Compound Effect. Uh, uh, this is my first takeaway. Take and also, uh, we talked about smart goal. So I mm -hmm. think it's uh, important to, uh, to set goals, especially specific goals. And uh, yeah. I think that somewhere uh, during your learning and the... Uh, somewhere on, on your way you're gonna have to face difficulties so you have to overcome something so you can um, either give up or keep going and uh, this is a may that may be the the most important step because once you overcome that difficulty mm -hmm. you can face uh, everything because once you already overcome a difficulty the next time you, you're gonna have to face something you're gonna feel more concerned but because you have already experienced that uh, difficulty wonderful thank you amadou good okay matthew <laughs> what's okay, your takeaway uh yeah i think my main takeaway is that the campaign effect as i said in the beginning uh, it's a good reminder to think that it, it, is a, it works all the time, whether that's for good or bad reason. Yeah. And uh, let's see what happens if I have my habits in place, my triggers, and I, I show up every day uh, without expectations. Let's see what happens in, in, in a year, let's say. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I, I keep tracking, so I will look back and, and see where I'm coming from. Yeah. And um, it's also awesome to not be alone on this journey and have this uh, this uh, meeting. It's it, yeah. it's still virtual, but it feels it feels warm in, in a way. So that's uh, awesome. Not only you as the teacher, but everyone who's on the same uh, journey. So it's yeah. it's great. Good, good. Thank you. And communication is all about connection, right? We're, mm -hmm. we're connecting with each other and and using that communication to be able to do that. Um, and so I am so glad I get to, got to spend some time with you all today and thank you for your thoughts and your input and ideas here. We'll, we'll be doing another book club meeting in March. Um, I can see that there was a recommendation, Matthew, for Atomic yeah. Habits, huh? Yes. Okay. Right. That it's has so been on, that uh, has been recommended several times. So you know what? We're doing it. Let's do Atomic <laughs> Habits in March. Okay. Oh. I love it. So, and it's all, all along those lines of let's create these habits. Let's really get, and a lot of times these books, you know, are, are saying the same thing, but from different angles. So it gives us yeah. different perspective. It gives us different motivation um, and a different way. And again, that repetition, we just have to have that repetition to be able to really help ourselves apply what we're learning. Okay. All right. Thank you all. I hope you have a beautiful day and we'll, We'll talk again soon.
Thank you very much. Bye. See you, Annie. Yep. All right, and I can, I'll have the slides up uh, if Edgar's still here. Oh, he's not. Okay, I'll okay. have the slides up with the, the um, recording. All right. Thank you. Bye, All right, bye. thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye, consistency. <laughs>